We have been working hard in the studio and sweated and toiled to make some useful content for you. For all of you commentators that have said, give me more B-roll, please go back and look at my videos because I dropped an entire sizzle reel and unboxing just for you so that you could see all the footage that we captured in its glory. It's minutes and minutes of just Dell XPSs and a little bit of an unboxing. So go and enjoy and then come back to this one. Why are we not comparing the XPS 13 Plus, I hear you ask? Well, the Plus was a higher spec. It's got the 4K screen. I didn't think it was a fair comparison with devices that are about $999 and $699 in price point. So we, we went for the lower spec XPS 13 that I had in the studio because it's around that $1,000 mark. If you're spending that kind of money, high hundreds to a thousand in the Surface range, these are the, really the two devices you're gonna look at. The Surface Laptop Go 2, which I have already done a review of, so you can go check that one out and the Surface Laptop 4 that I have also done a review of a long time ago when that one came out. So you can go and feast your eyes on all of those reviews and I'm not gonna repeat everything here that I talked about there. What I do wanna talk about now is some of the nuances that you might care about, like screen size and how the different ratios affect things because as you look at this footage here now, you instantly realize Microsoft's approach with the 3-2 screen ratio that gives you a taller display has some interesting side effects. First of all, because the display is taller and the overall surface area is slightly larger diagonally, it actually is a much bigger device physically with the Surface Laptop 4 than the Dell XPS 13. It's 0.1 of an inch bigger when you look at it on paper and you might not realize in actual fact it's significantly larger than that when you put them side by side. Or in this case, take a look at this shot top down of the two devices where you can clearly see just how much extra height and also width you have gained with the Surface versus the XPS. Now, the Surface has some larger bezels. We're gonna look at that in a second when we compare the screens. So bear in mind that also gives the physicality a little bit of extra space. But if you're conscious about sticking this in a backpack, you want it as small and light as possible with as much screen real estate as possible, the XPS is probably gonna be a little bit more interesting to you. Your trade-off, obviously, is gonna be a little bit of build quality because the Surface devices seem to have very, very good build quality now that we're into fourth generations, third generations, and that kind of stuff. Microsoft is definitely the premium player here. The feel of it, the magnesium alloy, it, it feels superb. Not that the Dell doesn't, but there is something softer about the touch of the Surface device. And to be fair, even the Surface laptop to my fingers here, I'm gonna bring this one just into the shot for my second shot, but even on the Surface Laptop Go 2, I feel like the materials, I don't know what it is, it feels a bit smoother. If, if you were sanding wood, it's almost like the Surface devices have been sanded with a 300 grit or a 400 grit, and they've got really, really smooth, but not quite like shiny chrome. And it's like the XPS has been sanded with maybe a 150 or a 180 grit. So it's pretty smooth but it's not quite there yet. That's the best way I can describe it for you. When we're talking about size, let's also look at the Surface Laptop Go 2 because you might be thinking, well, Mike, that's a $699 laptop. It is, but they make some higher powered options in that. And so if the size and the form factor makes sense for you, you can get a little bit more memory, a little bit more storage and those kind of things to bump it up if you want. And again, it's got a Surface Laptop keyboard, which, which are great keyboards, the 3.2 screen gives you some extra height, so it isn't that much smaller than the Dell XPS as far as usability goes when you're working, but to get it in your backpack, it's a lot smaller than a Surface Laptop 4. So if you wanted to go Surface and Microsoft, less bloatware, maybe a little bit better support, maybe a little bit better build quality, you've really got two options that can compete and go head to head with the XPS. The other nuance and wrinkle here and it's probably not so important right now, but it will be in a few months time when they release Surface Laptop 5. Microsoft gives you the choice of an AMD or an Intel processor. And so right now in the, in the Surface Laptop 4 range, that looks like an 11th gen Intel, but it's, it's actually a previous gen AMD chip. 
They call it a Microsoft edition or whatever, but they really didn't change a whole lot. They just missed the timelines of AMD's newer mobile processors right when they wanted to release Surface Laptop 4. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, hang on a minute, isn't that gonna happen again? I don't know that it is, because AMD's already been showing off the new gen, the new new gen of their processors, and I think it looks like timing-wise, they're gonna be released before Surface Laptop 5 comes out. So ideally, we're gonna see a 12th gen Intel and latest gen AMD in Surface Laptop 5. That's gonna give us a fairer comparison for power, because obviously the 12th gen chip is a little bit beefier than the 11th, but it's also gonna give you that great opportunity to say, hang on a second, I can go AMD here, I'm not only limited to Intel. And I think that's a great choice that Microsoft gave its end users. Don't have that in the Surface Laptop Go 2, so keep in mind that's only in the bigger Surface Laptop 4, whether you go for the 13 half or the 15 inch. Battery life's another thing we wanna talk about here before we get to screens and keyboards, because I know what you're thinking. I think it all the time when it comes to Windows laptops. How is the battery life? How is the battery life? How is the battery life? Let me tell you, in these devices, Surface Laptop 4 wins. It's the best battery of the three that I've got on my desk right now. Yes, it's the AMD chip, which is a little bit more battery than the Intel chip anyway, but it wins. And one of the reasons it wins is because it doesn't heat my legs like I'm grilling barbecue. The Dell can get a little warm. The Surface Laptop Go can get a little warm, which was surprising to me. They actually use a rubber feel material on the bottom I guess it dissipates heat better, but it transfers heat better. So if it's on your lap, you're gonna feel it. I live in Houston, Texas. I got all the heat I need outside, okay? I don't need more inside. So that's something to keep in mind. Service Laptop 4 is gonna run cooler. It's gonna run longer. The fans are nice and quiet. None of them are particularly loud. I do think Service Laptop 4 and XPS both do a great job of being in the quieter range for a Windows device. No Windows devices are as quiet as the Apple MacBook range. It is what it is. I'm just pointing it out there in case you're wondering. So let's look at these screens. I've got the three devices here side by side. I'm also gonna give you some juicy B-roll so you can look at that as well, because I know you all like the B-roll and apparently don't like the bald geezer or whatever that comment was a couple of hours ago. Thanks for that, you know. Try and make my hair look good for the shots, but whatever. I know it's not quite a fair kind of comparison to throw in a 600-ish, 700-ish dollar Surface Laptop Go 2. But I wanted to just show you a couple of things, because if you're looking for a lightweight Chromebook alternative, this might be in your wheelhouse. And so look, take a feast of your eyes on how these screens differ. This is a great representation of this great 1610 Dell XPS screen, 13.4 inches in that 1610 ratio. And then we go to the two Surface laptops that stretch the height a little bit more with that three two ratio, every three inches across, two inches up. And you see here, ignore the third one for a second, but look at the two of these side by side. Yes, there is a bigger chin at the bottom of the Surface laptop go to, but you see the screen is actually slightly taller. And if you look at the actual image on the screen, the gap at the top is not as much higher as the gap at the bottom. In other words, it's not quite as tall as the Dell, but remember it's, it's like an inch smaller diagonally. So even though you've lost that inch and you've got a physically smaller device, you really didn't give up much in screen height for that whole inch that you gave up. And, and let, me, let me pull up a web page here. Let's just go to Google and check out the news, see what's happening in the world today. This is probably the best way I can show you when you're working on a device like this, and then here is one I made earlier. So now you see how they handle information. Obviously this is default scaling. So I'm not changing any resolutions or anything. I'm just giving you straight out of the box so you can see how it's handling the nuances and differences. If you notice, there's actually a little bit more information on the screen of the smaller Surface Laptop Go 2 than there is on the Dell. We started the headline for the next section, whereas the Dell cut off here uh, falsely claims, which is actually about two lines and a little bit. So height-wise, you do gain and win with the Surface Laptop. Width-wise, it doesn't really make much of a difference because practically, if you full screen either 
of these laptops, you're gonna have all the widths that you need to make things work. So what I'm saying is, if ultra portability is important to you, you're doing lightweight work, web, email, browser-based text documents, that kind of stuff, nothing really pushing it too heavy, you could save hundreds of dollars based on the screen comparison and go for a Surface Laptop 2. Yes, it's an 11th gen chip, not a 12th gen chip, but for those kind of use cases, that's not really gonna be that big of an issue. The trackpads are similar, again, because the Surface Laptop's a little bit deeper, because of that 3.2 screen, you actually gain a little bit of height on the trackpad, and I think the height is important, more so than the width. The keys themselves, looking between these two, you can see here, look at the caps keys, the way that they fit this keyboard on the Surface Laptop Go 2, we'll just call it the Go 2, I think, from now on, make my life easier. They've just basically lopped off the edges of the edge keys that are typically wider. So the shift key's not as wide, enter key's not as wide, backspace not as wide, but the main keys themselves are pretty much what you would expect and where you would expect them. Edges of the trackpads line up pretty much with the side of the space bar, nice and centered on the devices. It's an interesting comparison. So let's take this one out of the mix. Goodbye for now, LG2. And let's put these two together. This is a little bit more of a fair comparison of what you probably will be wondering about. I've got about $900 to $1,000 to spend in American money, might be different in your region, and I wanna buy a lightweight, ultra-portable laptop. And so here are the two prime contenders from Windows. Now you'll notice you've got an entire section here below the first section and a whole lot more information. Look at the height difference now on these screens. I mean, you're gaining nearly an inch in additional height. Yes, you're giving up a little bit at the chin, but overall, this is by far the taller of the two. Let me see if I can do this for you. All right, if you look at those two corners now at the bottom, they are exactly lined up at the bottom, and the top is a good half inch, maybe slightly more in height. 13.4 against 13.5 inches, so you would think Oh, they're about the same size, but they're not the same size at all. That extra height and now the extra size because of the bezels that do look a little bit dated on the Surface Laptop 4. Now we've really got that full-size keyboard, much bigger trackpad, much larger palm area to work on. All of that combines to be a much more comfortable keyboard to type on than the Dell. And if you watch the channel, you know that Surface devices make some of the nicest keyboards for Uncle Mikey. I just like them. It is what it is, okay? Hopefully you like them too and we can be Surface laptop keyboard buddies together. But they make a great keyboard and it's got a good range of travel. I think they did a great job with the keyboards. I talk about it a lot, so I'm sorry if you heard it before. It is what it is because they're still awesome, okay? Just, just hail to Microsoft on the quality of your keyboards. You know, it's funny. If I may digress for a second, don't just skip 15 seconds, stick with me, because this is a useful nugget. But you may not realize, when, when Uncle Mikey started in the world of tech back in the 90s, because I'm that old, Microsoft were big in standalone keyboards. They made the ergonomic keyboards. They were one of the bigger manufacturers to make external keyboards for desktops and things that you could buy separately, wireless, Bluetooth, that kind of stuff. And I think that keyboard tech has done them good service and stayed with them over the years and the decades because they still make great keyboards today. So, you know, it's just interesting to see how things evolve. It's like the hinge thing. You know, they've got the Duo 2, which has a great hinge. They've got the Surface Laptop, which has this folding screen, and they had the Surface Book before that. But they've been in hinges for a long time. It's why the Surface Pro hinges are so nice when you can pop the screen back and that kind of thing. So, a little quick history lesson. Yours for free. You're welcome, but let's get back to it. Okay, we're gonna click on a headline and see what happens. I do not know what's gonna happen. I've not tested this before. It's Mikey's unofficial real world speed test because we all live on the internet and we all click on links. Let's find out. Okay, 12th gen wins. The Dell loaded that page a little bit quicker. Remember, this is a Surface Laptop 4 with the AMD Ryzen, which was the previous gen Ryzen, I think, when it came out. So, huh, you know, let's see what happens when they drop a new one, but if speed and performance is your most important thing and you live in a web browser, apparently XPS might be a little bit better. Hey, while we're talking about performance and those kind of things, 
Here is some benchmarking that we did so that you can feast your eyes on it and look at the performance of the chips. Remember, I don't like benchmarks a whole lot. We are not an uber technical channel. And the reason for that is very simple. In the real world, for normal everyday usage that most of us business owners, entrepreneurs, day-to-day -day users use these devices for, they pretty much do what you want them to do. Opening web pages, loading Office, loading Outlook or your email client, that kind of stuff. They all do it very well. And sometimes the benchmarks can make things look like there's a bigger difference than there really is. However, you asked, so we answered. All in all, I think we're getting a familiar feel here. The physical size of Surface Laptop 4 being the biggest because of that 3-2 screen ratio and that 13.5 diagonal means it has got the biggest or as big a keyboard as the Dell. It's got the largest trackpad. It's got more area to work on for your palms, for your hands to rest on the keys, more screen area to get stuff done, additional information on the screen because it's higher and you can fit more on it. Everything about it says, I'm the bigger laptop here and I'm using all of that size to your benefit, Mr. User. And if that's important to you, which it is to me, that's going to be the one you're probably going to go for, even though it's last gen chip tech. If you can wait a few months, the new ones will be out. I think where the Dell wins is you want a decent-ish size, but you really want ultra portability to throw it in your backpack. You really want 12th generation chips, even though it might be a little warmer and even though you're going to sacrifice a little bit of battery life and you don't really care as much about overall build quality. And I don't mean that disrespectfully. Dell can make some great machines. I saw a comment on, on Reddit today with somebody who was using an XPS 13, four and a half years later, no issues, been a great device. I just feel as though that's more of an exception than the norm. Correct me if I'm wrong and do it nicely, but there seems to be far more comments where people have slight hiccups and niggles with XPSs than there are comments about people not. I don't see that many comments with the surface range. They do seem to have that stability a little bit better. And then finally, you know, I guess the, the, the cannonball here, the Surface Laptop Go 2. Doesn't really play in this ballpark, but it can. But it could save you a whole lot of money if you're a lightweight user and you just want to get the job done. And in that case, it's surprisingly competent and it may very well be the prettiest color of all of them. The blue looks spectacular. The only thing we haven't really talked about here as we round out is ports. You go with a Dell XPS and all you've got is a couple of Thunderbolt ports. You've got one on this side and one on this side. It's USB-C all the way, baby, and that's it. No headphone jack, no nothing. You go to the Surface Laptop Go 2 and look at what we've got. We've got a USB-A, we've got a USB-C, we've got a headphone jack, and then on this side, you've got the Surface connector for power. Remember, the Dell's got two USB-Cs, but one of those is going to be taken by power when it's plugged in. So you're only left with a single port. With this, you've got the power on one side, and then you've still got all the ports available on the other. That might be important to you. And then finally, on Surface Laptop 4, it's the same. USB-A, USB-C, and a headphone jack. Surface connector on the other side. And thank you to everybody that, that gave me some feedback about headphone jacks. Apparently, they are quite popular and a lot of you all still do like them. Not only to plug your headphones in, but also to plug in external speakers, which is not really something I've had to do for a very long time. And I kind of forgot that people still do that. So my bad, I'm sorry. Slap on the hand, Uncle Mikey, get it right. For the people who are giving their time to watch this channel. Hey, drop your questions below. Till next time, subscribe and be amazing. One of the fun things about having a channel like this is waking up and seeing some of the fun comments that I get in the mornings. Today I got a message from Dell. I guess it was somebody at Dell, not actually Mr. Dell, but he wanted to take a moment and share the reasons they've been having issues with some of the screens and delivery times is because of the COVID lockdowns in China. So there you have it, straight from the horse's mouth. I think it's pretty cool that they took the time to reach out and let us know that. But evidently, based on some other comments I'm seeing and looking at the Dell website as well, it looks like now on the XPS 13s, you can order some of the nicer screens again. They weren't there last week when we were recording. So it's good to see that they've got rid of that bottleneck and everybody's gonna be able to order pretty much whatever screen they want and get those delivery times down a lot tighter. Wait, 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 don't go right now. This is the bit that I need your help with. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell so you see my videos when they come out. Look, I work really hard on these. When you subscribe, you help the channel grow and you'll be awesome. So thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And now you really can go. Till next time, it's going to be amazing.